Hey folks, thanks for stopping by my channel. I am Brian, and today we're going to be going over the brand new, newly released V-Tolman Jump 1000 and the optional extended battery and let you folks know if it's a good deal or not. So I'm gonna try to make this video short, sweet, and to the point, and only show you folks what you really came here to see, and that is the testing and the results, and hopefully my opinion, if it means anything to you. So this Jump 1000 is a 1,408 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery station. It features a 1,000 watt inverter capable of up to 2,000 watts, but there's a little caveat to this inverter, and it's very similar to the X-Boost on an EcoFlow, whereas if you have an appliance that's going to run more than 1,000 watts, watts say a heat gun at 1500 watts this battery station will lower the voltage and continuously run that heat gun at 1000 watts therefore it does not cut off the heat gun that's great for things like heat guns or hot plates not so great for sensitive electronics that have a very specific voltage requirement and obviously next to it you can see that it's got an expandable battery that you can purchase separately to make this thing almost 3000 watt hour power station this is the V Tolman 1500 expandable battery pack, and it's rated at 1,548 watt hours. So when you pair the two, when you get this one and this one, you combine those watt hours and you're going to effectively create a 2,956 watt hour power station. Now, when you pair these together, it just increases the watt hours. It, does ha it has nothing to do with the inverter capability. So you're not gonna get double the wattage rating on the inverter. You're still only gonna get 1,000 continuous watts. Okay, now pricing. Pricing on, on Amazon is a little funky because they, they have the list price, which is around $1,299 for, for both on average, but they have huge discount coupon tickets that you have to click if you want to buy it on Amazon. You can, of course, go to V. Toman's website, which we'll discuss in a little bit, but through Amazon, they have huge discounts. And right now, as of October the 11th, 2022, you can get this Jump 1000 on Amazon for $899. That equates to 63 cents a watt hour, and you can buy the 1500 expandable battery pack for $699, and that equates to 45 cents a watt hour. So when you combine the two, giving you 2,956 watt hours at a price of 1,598 for the pair, you're getting this for 54 cents a watt hour. So basically 50 cents a watt hour for 3,000 watt hours of lithium iron phosphate. That is a fantastic deal. I'll be hard pressed to find a better deal than that in terms of battery chemistry and price per watt. V Toman is going to be having a huge sale. I don't know what pricing is gonna be, but it's going to run from October the 12th through October the 20th. And I suspect the, the pricing is probably gonna be better than what it is now on Amazon. So make sure if you're interested in this to check out V Toman's website between those dates to see what kind of deal you can get on these and if after october 20th you know you don't get it and you still want it there will be a 10 percent discount code in the in the description from me if you're still interested that you can use on their website so on the front of this unit you're going to get one 12 volt regulated cigarette style port along with two 55 21 ports and this whole panel right here is rated at 12 volts or 10 amps all tied together you're gonna have two 5521 input jacks to support any kind of charging, whether it's AC, solar, or DC, is where you're, this is where you're going to plug in those cables to actually charge up this unit. Then for USBs, you're gonna get three standard five volt, 2.4 amp USB plugs, and then you're gonna get one USB-A quick charge 3.0. Up here, you got two 100 watt power delivery output only ports, so keep that in mind, you cannot charge this unit with these ports, you can only output 100 watts. You're going to get three AC120 pure sine wave receptacles. And then over here, you're gonna have a port to where you can plug in your expandable battery if you chose to buy one. And then on this port over here is where you're going to install your jumper cables if you choose to buy those as well. And as far as the screen's concerned, it's going to give you the percentage state of charge. It's going to give you the amount of runtime to empty. It's going to give you the input and output wattage, as well as display whether you're using USB, Type-C, or the AC inverters turned on. It'll let you know down here as well. And of course, you do have a LED light in the back with multiple options. So you got low, medium, high, your flashing, and then your SOS. So we did do a DC capacitance test on this unit, and I was able to squeeze out 1,125 watt hours or about an 80% efficiency rating. I also did an AC discharge capacity test, and I was using a set of incandescent light bulbs that equaled around 210 watts, and we were able to get out 1,164 watt hours 
or 83% efficient off of the AC discharge test. Now, the interesting thing, I also did another AC discharge test where I hooked up both batteries together and I was able to get out 2,503 watt hours or 85% efficient. So when both of these batteries were hooked up is when I got the most efficient rating off of the AC discharge test. I also did a parasitic drain. So what I mean by that is I, I turned the inverter on. I didn't plug anything into it, but I wanted to see how much power this unit used when the inverter was running over a three hour period of time. And after three hours, I was down to 97.9%. So that tells me that this battery uses about 0.8% of its battery juice to power that inverter every hour, which is very good. It's not a lot at all for your parasitic drain. All right, folks, so let me kind of go over with you the inverter capabilities of this power station. So again, remember, it can do up to 1,000 continuous running watts for an appliance that typically takes over 1,000 watts. This heat gun is rated at 1,500 watts on full power. So I'm going to turn this all the way up and let you see what this battery unit does to keep it running at 1,000 watts. Again, very similar to the EcoFlow X-Boost, where it's just going to lower the voltage once this appliance draws over a thousand watts it's going to decrease that voltage and keep it running at a thousand watts instead of just cutting off this heat gun so you can see we're running at 1023 watts on a 1500 watt rated heat gun so pretty neat feature if you don't have a voltage specific appliance like a heat gun. It's just going to technically lower the voltage, probably decrease the heat a little bit, but it's going to keep that thing running at 1000 watts. This does have a 2000 watt surge, so it can get up to 2000 watts really, really fast, but it's going to ramp that thing down really quickly and continuously run at 1000 watts comfortably. And I also did a multi-device test, so we'll go straight to that right now. So in terms of being able to use multiple output ports here we are running a fan off of the v Tomans inverter we are actually charging up another battery station at 100 watts using the usb-c output we are running two led lights off of the usb-a ports and we are also charging up my phone via one of the quick charge ports as well now we'll go ahead and turn this on just to make sure that we get passed through charging so as you can see here we are charging and we are still providing output power to all of these devices connected so of course pass through charging works and it should every power station in this day and age should support pass through charging now let's get into charging so charging on this thing is is i would like to see it get better to be honest so so the most you can charge this unit is 200 watts and you can see here when i plug in the ac wall outlet i'm able to pull on average 175 watts to charge this thing that's not the best for a power station this size so it's going to take you around eight hours to charge this thing fully from zero to 100. when you add in the equation of having to plug in this expandable battery to this main power station, it's gonna take you half a day or all day to charge both at 175 watts. You cannot charge this battery station standalone. You have to plug it in to the main power unit to charge it. And the way charging works is when you plug in the AC wall outlet or solar panels, it's going to charge up the main unit first. Once this gets to 100%, it's gonna transfer all that juice through this cord that it comes with, just like that. It's gonna transfer that electric juice through this cord and start charging up this battery. Once this battery's full, you're done charging. When you go to discharge these things, if both of these are full, it's always going to deplete the expandable battery first and then deplete the main unit battery. So that makes sense to me. I mean, you're always gonna, you're always gonna to wanna to have this main unit have the most battery juice in it at all times whatever you're using it for so that that makes sense the way that they have that set up just keep in mind 200 watts max it's going to take you a long time to charge this you can't do solar charging and ac charging at the same time it only accepts 200 watts max of solar or an open circuit voltage of 12 volts to 30 volts so, you're so these do have a full 24 month or two year warranty from the date of purchase okay so now my unprofessional conclusion on these battery units i'll go over the pros first because there's a lot of pros and I'm gonna be transparent with you and there are cons to this battery as well. It's up to you obviously to decide if the pros outweigh the cons. The pros on this are pricing. For almost, if you buy both of these for almost 3000 watt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries for $1,500, you'll no, you will not find a better deal on that anyway. So the pricing on this thing is outstanding. I don't know how V Toman does it, but 
the pricing's great. Of course, you have a lot of outlets, and I like the fact that all of the outlets are in the front, and I've expressed that before in some videos of mine. I like having all the outlets in the front, especially for my situation in the back of my truck. It's easier for me to have everything up front so I don't have to worry about plugging things in, into the side of these units. And the 12 volt regulated cigarette plug is regulated. Um, not that it really matters so much on these lithium irons because they maintain such a, a constant voltage throughout the entire state of charge of the battery. It doesn't really affect a compressor fridge up until the last five or 10 minutes, but they are regulated if you were wondering. And this thing can also be used as a car jump starter. I didn't talk about that though, because the car jump starting clips are not included when you buy this. You have to buy those separately. I have no idea how much they are. It's kind of irritating that they claim this, that this can be used as a jump starter, but then you have to go buy the jump starting cables. So I didn't even go over that, but just know if you do get this unit, you can buy probably a $20 pair of jumper cables and plug it into the front of that unit and use this as an actual jump starter. Not a trickle charger, but an actual jump starter to jump start your car or truck battery. All right, so now for the cons because not everything's perfect. Charging capacity, 200 watts is not good in my opinion, especially for a unit of this size. If you are not worried about having to fast charge something, then these are great. If you are worried about being able to charge this thing up in a few hours, these are not good for you because they will take multiple hours. And I will tell you during all of these tests, when I had to, to discharge both of these batteries multiple times, it was kind of annoying having to recharge them for every test at a 200 watt rate. It took a long time. So again, if you're not worried about having to have fast charging, then I wouldn't worry about it. But if you do need the ability to quickly charge these things up, keep in mind, you only will get around 180 watts worth of juice be that you can input into these units. Uh, the other thing that I wish would be different is the fact that you cannot stack these on top, which a lot of batteries you can't, but still I, I wish these manufacturers would realize that, that we as consumers would much rather have this battery sitting on top of this battery than side by side with a cable. I wish if they all they got to do is remove these two handles and I've tried but there's a little bump up right here that doesn't that they won't fit on each other it's just my personal con I wish that you could stack them on top of each other and you can um, and the other thing that's kind of funky on this is that you can't charge this battery standalone. You have to plug it into the main battery unit to charge it up. I wish there was an option to charge this battery separately. I don't understand why they didn't put a charging option for the standalone battery. Um, it seems like it would be fairly easy fix to put a charging port on the expandable battery. However, there is not. You have to charge it up with this jump 1000 and uh, not a deal breaker but this doesn't have a ups function some of the other bigger battery units that i've reviewed actually have a ups function it's not a deal breaker but i but just to inform you th this does not have a ups function so with the cons and the pros you know obviously weigh it out i think price is going to be a big factor if you need 3000 watts at a very very good price I, again i don't know how vtoman does it for a price so low but you know it's, it's got a two-year warranty on it so you can buy them and, and rest assured that if it does break it is covered for two years, but hopefully I was able to express the pros and the cons of this unit and you can make an educated decision if you prefer this setup or not. So guys, with that, this is the V-Toman Jump 1000 and the V-Toman Jump 1500 Expandable Battery Pack. Hope you enjoyed. Take care and we'll see you soon.